Here is a quick update on the weather we have for the northern part of uh, we have North America here, southern Canada. Let's take a look at the flooding we've got going on here in eastern Tennessee, central Tennessee, down through Mississippi, eastern Louisiana, heading on up into Kentucky, and extending on towards the Ohio Valley. This is the Mississippi Valley here, and it is really under the gun for a lot of flooding. So heed those flood warnings. This is like a train of moisture, and put this in perspective, flooding is a very vicious killer and it causes a lot of deaths each year. Do not drive through flood waters, do not go near them, and if they uh, start rising into your neighborhood, it's best to get out immediately. So as this train of moisture continues to head northward along this stalled out frontal boundary, during the next 24 to 48 hours, it's going to continue to cause flooding. Now up here in the northeast, we're, get, we're lucking out. We've got this warm front. We have highs in the 60s across upstate New York, northwestern and central Pennsylvania. But east of that front in New England, that's where we're going to be held down into the 30s and 40s. And up here in eastern Canada, up to in southern Quebec and Ontario as well. Uh, the northern Great Lakes here, this is where we're seeing a ton of cold air. Look at the temperature disparity between these air masses, 60s and 70s out ahead. We've got teens and 20s behind us across most of the plains. We have freeze uh, warnings all the way down to the Mexican border here in Southern California, Arizona, and New Mexico. But the west is very dry at the moment. Let's get right to precipitation amounts. Upwards of three to six inches of rainfall from southeastern Louisiana heading on up into the mid-Mississippi River Valley towards Tennessee and extending eventually into southern Virginia where we'll get in on the act tonight and tomorrow with this heavy rain moving in. Across New York, Pennsylvania and southern New England, we'll get in on the act on some of this tonight, but it will be short-lived and we'll only see upwards of about, say, an inch. So we're not looking too bad and most areas will see only a quarter inch in southeastern New England. The rest of the nation looking very dry. So let's take a look at the NAO index. We're, we're negative right now, but models take us positive and then zigzag us right around zero. That's going to have implications for this uh, cold snap that everybody was calling. It's not going to be much of a cold snap for the most part, at least through the next week and a half. And I'll explain why here. Let's take a look first at our scenario. We've got a trough developing here in the west, ridge in the east. Those are where those warm temperatures are. Let's take a look at those warm temperatures. we got warm temperatures in the east and they will continue to progress. Now here's where the GFS has really come into my line of thinking. The GFS has gotten rid of those ridiculous temperatures across the northern tier cap, uh, states here and replace them with more realistic temperatures. Instead of minus 50s and minus 60s, we've got most of those uh, frigid temperatures staying north of the U.S. Canadian border and we're getting bouts of temperatures, zeros, teens. Those are more realistic and those will pinwheel through 240 hours or about through January 23rd on these maps and you can see very realistically that this air mass is a lot more realistic than the other air masses so I'm starting to see that the GFS has worked out its really bad feedback problems especially with the temperatures and those temperatures will continue to pinwheel across them. We'll see those reinforcing shots of cold air, but most of that dangerous air stays well north of the U.S.-Canadian border, which is very good news because we, I don't think it's realistic to get minus 50s and minus 60s across the northern mid-Atlantic and New England and through the Great Lakes. So let's be glad that that's not going to happen. So now many people have questions about the upcoming storm later next this week here. Well, the seventh, particularly the 17th through the 19th. Let's take a look at that scenario. Well, we have that clipper system, as advertised, going to move through the Great Lakes. You see the northern jet stream here pushing through, but that low is going to just move a little bit too far to the north. Southern stream phasing. Southern stream not very impressive. It's going to continue to head off the coast, and that's where we're going to see the system just move off the coast, move off the North Carolina coast as a simple short wave. Not a major closed low. We're talking 10, 14 millibars here. That is not impressive. It's going to continue to move off the coast and then spread some light snow across possibly the southern mid-Atlantic here, uh, maybe as far south as northern North Carolina, southern Virginia, central Virginia, these areas. And we might see some snow maybe as far north 
and I'm not going to say snow, let's say light snow or flurries or snow showers across portions of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, but th this is a long shot. If, if we do see this, it would be maybe a coating to an inch, but you can see these little pressures, they just, they're not fusing together, they're not going to combine to create a monster storm, so for all those people hoping for a major snowstorm, this just isn't going to happen with this scenario. And if we take a look at potential vorticity, you can see it's just not wrapping up the way uh, we'd like it to see it come together. These, these should be closer. This should be more amplified. You should see a more amplified uh, southern stream, jet stream. And across here, you have a strong clipper but the clipper's not even interacting with the East Coast system. So that pretty much does it. I'm meteorologist Mark Molnar. Go uh, like me on Facebook at MeteoMark. That's our main, where we do a lot of our micro updates. And don't forget to subscribe to us here on YouTube. Here's a four day forecast for my hometown viewers from Binghamton to Elmira and the Northern Tier counties of Pennsylvania.